I'm Ryan Dark. I am the Director of Technical Support at Go Engineer. I've worked in the technical support team since 2008. Today we're answering random questions about SOLIDWORKS. What is the best 14-inch laptop for SOLIDWORKS modeling? That is a real specific question, and it kind of narrows you down to just the maybe three large vendors, Lenovo, HP, and Dell. There are other options out there, but uh, they might be a little more risky. I might recommend against. Go with something that's mainstream. Uh, our company uses Dell. It served us very well for a very long time. Regardless of what you pick, make sure that you get an NVIDIA GPU inside of it. Workstation grade GPU, of course. Here's the bad news about laptops. A laptop will never be as good as a desktop. Ever. Otherwise, desktops would just not exist. But they exist because they're far more powerful. They have far better heat dissipation. They can do just things faster than a laptop ever will. So when you're picking a laptop, just don't forget you are sacrificing the performance of the machine for its mobility. So let me get started by saying virtual components and the way that SOLIDWORKS handles them suck. All right, well, I won't tell you to not use them, but I'll tell you the downstream consequences of using virtual components. Most file management systems that are on the market today are file-based management systems. Virtual components don't have files themselves. They're inside of other files. So when you move into a product data management system, a PDM system, it's trying to manage revisions based on a file. But if that file contains 50 different virtual designs inside of it, you can't manage each of those designs separately. So they're all going to revision forward at the same rate as each other. You revision one design forward, it revisions the 49 other ones. For that reason, you should find any possible way to not use virtual components because the downstream effect is a data management nightmare. Okay, here's a question. I just got my CSWP. I want to draw more, but I don't know where to get good drawings. You are surrounded by objects that you can model. Uh, you can go down to any shop and get a cheap pair of calipers, and you can start constructing anything that's sitting beside you on your desk in your room. And that is excellent practice for what you're going to have to do when you create your own designs. Uh, the best part is you can't mess those things up. And you've got the object right in front of you and you'll be satisfied with whatever you make and you'll have learned something from making things badly so that you won't make them badly the next time. So just pick up any object on your bookcase or your desk and just start modeling it. It doesn't matter what it is. Make an apple. Make a, make a Furby, make a beanie baby, make a whatever. It's all good practice. All right, this question is not so much a question as a statement. I have severe lag when moving parts in my assembly. My hardware is a GeForce RTX 4070 Ti and a, an Intel i9-13900K. So one of those things is actually pretty good. The CPU is pretty good. SOLIDWORKS is mostly a CPU-bound software, which means that the slowdowns that you're going to see are going to bottleneck mainly in the CPU. But there's the added complexity that this GPU is consumer-grade. It has drivers designed around the idea that it's going to play high frame rate programs. These high frame rate programs are colloquially called games. Those drivers are not excellent for CAD software. So Probably what's happening here is that the GPU is just, it, it's a great fast ride. It's probably going to run Cyberpunk 2077 at highest resolution, but it's just not good for SOLIDWORKS. I know I'm going to get roasted on that one. Um, die mad about it. Okay, this, uh, this question is about import diagnostics not working. I'm having trouble using import diagnostics on SOLIDWORKS 2024 and the future works is not showing. Can someone help me? What's happening there is that, and I'm guessing here, there's a system called 3D Interconnect, and it's designed around the idea of not fully importing neutral format files like Step and IGIS, but instead putting a linked representation of that file inside the program. And when you put the linked representation inside the program, it can't have import diagnostics and feature works run on it. 
So that's probably what's happening here. If you go into its tools options, system options, import, import section inside the options area, there's just a little toggle that says enable 3D interconnect. And if you turn that off and you re-import the file, both of those systems will turn right on. So this question is, is anyone on here using the veterans program version of SOLIDWORKS? And I don't think enough people know about this program, but if you are a veteran of, I believe, either the USA or a Canadian military, they will give you a discounted license of SOLIDWORKS for Makers. I think it's about 20 bucks. And not only that, Go Engineer will provide a free self-paced training for the SOLIDWORKS Essentials on how to use SOLIDWORKS. So for 20 bucks, you can get the software, get trained on the software, and kind of get your leg up getting into design and CAD industries. I think it's pretty cool. It's a great deal. All right. Uh, here's a question. Hi, everyone. Have you ever encountered this issue? Probably. After using Smart Dimension, it seems like SOLIDWORKS is crashing. Like I can't exit the sketch, do any feature, or even close the SOLIDWORKS window. Thank you so much. <sighs> I read these terribly. Cut. Action. <laughs> After using Smart Dimension, it seems like SOLIDWORKS is crashing. This is my favorite question. SOLIDWORKS crashes. It does. Like, it, it does all the time. Like, for various reasons. And there's 90% there's of the time an explanation that we could find for it. But it does take some effort. It takes a few things. Here's the recipe. If you're having crashing, I hope you have endurance and you want to cooperate with our technical staff for a good long time. Because we have both of these and we will work with you until we find a reason that it is crashing and help it get fixed. But without those two things, you will never see the end of crashing because it, it does take some time. Beyond that, like the technical way that we find crashing is we narrow it down to either being environment specific, file specific, or workflow specific. And workflow specific tends towards being an actual bug inside of the software. If you do a specific set of commands in a certain order and it crashes, that's probably a bug. So we report that up to software development in SOLIDWORKS and they will make a report inside their development team to correct it in the code in a future release. Uh, the other two, uh, environmental specific crashes, they don't always crash. And that's kind of their hallmark is sometimes you do a process, it crashes. Sometimes you do it, it doesn't. That usually means that something inside of the computer's hardware operating system environment is different over time. And locating those is kind of difficult. And oftentimes it crops up from maybe your Windows install is pretty old. And, you know, after you install and uninstall programs a few hundred times, there gets to be a lot of garbage inside of it and the operating system doesn't work well anymore. So it's pretty regular practice, or at least it was pretty regular practice once upon a while to regularly format a computer and put a new Windows image on it so that you could have a fresh start. File specific issues, they're kind of like bugs. If they're repeatable, we collect the file, we try to reproduce it on our end, and assuming it crashes on our end, which would make it not an environmental specific crash, we would report it to the software development team and have them take a look at what would be needed to fix it. So that's crashing for you. In the vein of crashing, uh, if your computer does a blue screen of death, that's not our software. Our software didn't crash. Our software asked for something probably totally reasonable and the computer said, nah. And, it was, and then it said, I'm tired. And then it blue screened. And that's what happened when a blue screen up pops up. SOLIDWORKS is a heavy program and it's, it's pretty realistic that it's the heaviest program that is run on most workstations. And for that reason, it's going to stress out computers more often than other software. This is a, sort of a question in the genre of moving a PDM system. And it's like, how do I move a PDM system from one server to another server because I'm replacing the hardware? And the answer would be contextual, I would say. I'd say if you've never done this before, don't. 
have someone else do it. PDM systems contain all of your intellectual property. It's the most valuable thing that your company could have, and it's also probably one of the easiest things that you could possibly lose. And if you've never migrated all of your intellectual property from one server to another, I would ask a professional to do it, which we have an entire paid services team that does this all day, every day. They do it 100% right every time, and I'd have them do it. Uh, these people are highly trained. So that's, that's the answer if you've never done a PDM migration at all. Just have someone else do it. Now if you have done a PDM migration at some point in your past, then you probably understand why that's my advice in the first place. Because if you miss any of the steps along the way, it becomes a really awful situation to be in. That's the best way I could put it. But if you are very detail oriented and feel real confident or you don't have a ton of intellectual property or you don't feel very attached to the intellectual property and you don't feel like you'd feel bad if you threw it in the trash can and set it on fire. We have a bunch of guides that will let you migrate your PDM system from one server to another. Um, it takes a longer amount of time but you can get there. That's all the time we got, so if you have other questions, comment below or tag us on Reddit and we'll answer them all in another video. So that's it. I'll see you next time.